Hi guys, my name is Michelle and I'm an advisor on the SRA Hub. Today we're going to learn about post-grad finances. So this is going to be really helpful for anyone graduating from college either this year or um, this summer or even if you're in high school, it's good to know some of this information early on so that you can plan ahead. All right. So Post-grad finances, learning to adult 101, you guys. So in this webinar, we're gonna cover quite a few topics, student loans, your salary, paying taxes, how to budget so that you can pay your rent. We're gonna talk about health insurance and also retirement, which sounds really far away, but the best advice that I, that I hope you guys will take away from this webinar is that you can start saving now and you're actually gonna get a lot of benefits by doing so. So if you guys have student loans, that's you know perfectly normal, most students do nowadays. So before graduating from college, you guys wanna make sure you guys create an online account on your loan servicer's website and complete the mandatory exiting counseling. So you guys might have remembered when you guys were entering college, you guys had to take um, a counseling um, online or most of the online session. Now you have to take an exit one. If you're not sure who your loan servicer is, I can show you in a bit where you can find that out. So what you wanna do is work with them and pick a repayment plan. So basically, um, how long are you going to take to pay back your loans? And the standard one is about 10 years, but it you know depends on your own finances. And something I want to say is all of the things that I'm going to be talking about are just kind of general information. Every situ everybody's situation is a little bit different. So please, if you have more questions, if you're an SRA, reach out to your advisor. If you're a hubster, you can always email me and we can get on the phone and talk about it or webcam or even just kind of answer questions over email. So something to keep in mind. So I'm going to show you guys actually while we're on here. So does this look familiar? Federal Student Aid website. You guys might recognize it has really a lot of information, not only about, you know, when you guys were applying for FAFSA or California Dream Act or whatever it is, um, but they have a lot of information about repaying your loan. So if you guys log into your uh, federal student aid, you'll see your you know, federal student loan and grant history and you'll find out where you can make your loan payments. So you guys can do that here. Um, okay, back to the webinar. So let's say your repayment plan is 10 years. Your monthly bill, which is how people usually pay is by month, will depend on how much you borrowed, of course, how much your interest rates are, and um, the plan you end up you know, signing up for. It. Because a lot of students are like, 10 years, man, I'm gonna be like in my 30s, like I wanna pay this right away in five years. And although that sounds great, it might be a little too much, especially as you're trying to start your life and your career. So. Um, just keep that in mind when you're picking your plan and that your monthly bill will depend on that. So you guys can also look into these programs that are called student loan forgiveness programs. So um, they have these programs where if you are, let's say, working in a job in public service or if you're a teacher, you can actually get your loan forgiven, which basically means like you don't have to pay all of it off. So one catch is that a lot of people don't know that you still have to pay up to a certain amount or you have to be a teacher for like five full years before you get this loan forgiveness program. So there are a lot of different guidelines. So you should definitely check it out. Um, I actually have examples. Let me just show you. Uh, right here. So these are all these different kinds of forgiveness or cancellation programs here. If you click on public service, for example, it'll have all these different guidelines that you guys can read. So this is a great resource, especially if you wanna go into public service or if you're gonna do a AmeriCorps or the Peace Corps, those count too. 
Um, if you are um, planning to be a teacher and you're like, ooh, that's a great way to get my loans forgiven, just know that it's up to a certain amount. I think it's like 17500 which is still a good chunk. So you guys could look into that. These are some tips. So you guys were um, right. So most people got the question about whether or not you get a six-month grace period after you graduate before you pay your loans. So that's true. You don't have to pay them back for another six months. They have a grace period for that. Um, tip is to add calendar reminders every month of when they are due. I have that for myself. As I also have like reminders of when I have to pay my rent and credit card bills. So that's just general advice for adulting. <laughs> just put everything in, uh, in your phone and calendar and have reminders and notifications. Pick an affordable rep uh, rep repayment plan. Um, you can actually change it if you want to in the future. Um, if you have multiple different types of student loans, you can actually consolidate it so it's just one bill, which would make life so much easier for you. So if that's, you know, if you're someone with multiple student loans, you should talk to you, um, your loan servicer about it. You can also consider refinancing, maybe even down the line to get, you know, lower interest rate. Um, but usually you have to have pretty good credit score and a, a decent income so that they you know, trust that you'll be able to pay it back. And this will save you money in the long run. Um, one con that one of my friends told me is, um, you know, the interest rate isn't always fixed necessarily, depending on who you go to. So right now, maybe your interest rate is like 6%. But for my friend, when they refinanced it, it, it would change like monthly. So one month is like, pretty low and the next it could go up so it's a little more volatile so not as stable so um you guys want to talk to your advisor about it all right S salary so you guys are probably you know got some in uh internships and job experience and you're applying to your first job out of college so when you guys are looking at the salaries that you know you'll potentially make just keep in mind that your take home pay is less than you think because they're gonna take it out for taxes and benefits such as like social security or like uh, medical insurance that comes out out of every single paycheck. So, you know, just cause a job said, yay, you're gonna make $75,000 a year. You don't actually get to spend that much money or have that money to spend. Um, it's going to be a lot less than that. And you guys have to file your taxes every year. I think most of you guys know that. It's usually due April 15th of every year unless it falls on some holiday or weekend. Then it uh, usually like a day or two after April 15th. All right. Some of you guys are nervous about budgeting for rent. So these are three main things to keep in mind. So, like I said earlier, you know, your take-home pay is very different from your salary. So when you're budgeting for your rent, think about what your take-home pay is and not what the salary is when they gave you the job offer. Um, you want to consider parking fees that they might charge you, especially if you live in a city. Like for San Francisco, I know a lot of apartments, they, you know, you not only have to pay ridiculous rent for the roof over your head, but you have to pay for parking. So that's something to keep in mind. Or sometimes like in Berkeley, you have to, if you want to park on the street, um, you have to have like a parking permit that you have to pay for through the city. And I know a lot of you guys are probably living in apartments or college. So you guys are familiar with like security deposits that you guys have to pay and that you guys can get back if, once you move out if you didn't, you know, if you left the place as you found it. Roommates are a great way of, you know, decreasing your costs, and it'll be just like college, but everybody will hopefully have a nice full-time job. So it's a great way to transition, I think, and also keep the cost down. So how much of your income should you spend on rent? I would budget, you know, no more than 30%. So don't spend more than 30% of your monthly income on rent. And that could, you know, I know I understand that 
for some places going to be more or less, but try to aim for that. Health insurance. All right. So you guys probably know that it's the law that you must have health insurance and you can get it through a couple ways. So get it through your parents, employer, or just on your own. So if you're covered over, under your parents' health insurance, you'll be covered until your 26th birthday. So that's great. You don't really have to do anything. You can also get health insurance through your employer. Not every, not every employer will offer it, but you know, you'll have to ask them. And sometimes they'll also um, offer dental insurance as well as vision on top of that. And if, you know, if you don't have insurance through your employer or your parents, you can always get it on your own and you can look for um, plans from your state. Um, because what happens is if you don't have health insurance, you're going to be fined lots of lots of money, thousands of dollars. So I would just get the health insurance because, you know, you might have to pay all that money anyway. And that way you can make sure that if anything happens to you, that you're going to be okay and that you're not going to have to pay. You know, if you don't have health insurance and you get, you know, in an accident, it's going to cost you so much more to go to the hospital and get a surgery than if you just get health insurance and pay like a monthly fee. Okay, retirement. I know you guys aren't that excited, but I'm pretty excited to talk to you guys about this. So the key is to know that you should save right now. And you're like, Michelle, I'm only like 20, maybe 21. Why do I have to th start thinking about, you know, my days in my 60s and 70s? Because of a couple things. So the earlier you start, the more compound interest you'll earn. So when you guys think of interest and student loans, you're like, oh, no, interest is bad. But when it comes to saving money, something called com compound interest is um, basically the earlier you start saving, the more money you get. So I'll explain a little bit more. But um, the reason why you also want to start saving now is because money from government programs like Social Security, they aren't, they aren't guaranteed to be around by the time you retire or even when I retire. So it's, that's why it's important to save up just in case. And a little bit at a time can add up. So if you just save $25 a month, right, in an account that earns 7% interest, right, you're going to have, after 40 years, about 59, 60,000 almost saved just from $25 a month. So like I said, that compound interest of 7%, will give you a profit of about $48,000 just from interest, you know? So start, start saving now because if you were to wait 10 years from now to start saving the same amount of $25 a month, um, you would have to save almost twice as much or more than twice as much to get to that same amount in just 30 years. So I hope I have convinced you to start saving now, even if it's 20 bucks a month. So how much do you need when you're thinking about saving for retirement? It depends on, you know, the income of the job that you'll have, you know, when you get your job out of college. Um, when you wanna retire, some people wanna retire really early at 45. Some are like, no, I like working. I'm okay retiring when I'm 70. Um, and also the type of lifestyle. So do, are you someone who likes to travel a lot or do you want a big house with a big pool? So those are all things you have to think about. So our advice is to aim to replace 70 to 90% of your income. So you're wondering what I mean by that. So if someone earns an average of six, 63,000 per year, right, before they retire. So let's say I graduated from college, I got a job that pays me 63000 So 70 to 90% of that would be 44000 to 57000 um, So basically you wanna, that's how much I'm gonna expect to use when I'm retired. Hope that makes sense. If not, you can chat me the question. Um, Nerd Wallet is a great resource. 
um, check that out. They also have a really fun uh, retirement calculator on their website that basically helps you plan based on like when you want to retire, current income and all that. So use that as a first step. So you guys might have heard of 401k. Um, it is a retirement savings plan. So it's a type of retirement savings plan that is sponsored by your employer. So not every employer offers this, but some do. And basically it lets you save and invest a part of your paycheck before the taxes are taken out. And the cool part about this is a lot of employers match, meaning um, they'll, if you, you know, plan to save, for example, $10 from each um, paycheck, they might match and also uh, help you save $10 on top of that. So you're actually saving $20. So there are two types. I know we're like getting close to the times. So I'm going to kind of rush through these. But there are two types of 401k. There's a traditional and a Roth. And you, can, you guys can see the differences, but for traditional, money is contributed into the retirement plan before tax. Roth is contributed after tax. Traditional, you can't actually access your retirement funds before age 59 and a half. Um, that's not the same for Roth. You can always access whatever money you have in there as long as you've had the account for five years. Um, for tradi traditional, you have to pay taxes upon withdrawal. So once you know you retire, based on how much you have in there, you have to pay taxes on it. Versus for a Roth, there's no taxes you have to pay when you withdraw because you um, basically contribute the money post-tax. So you kind of pay the tax on it already. So you're like, Michelle, so exactly which one should I pick as, you know, as a young person you know, starting their career. Uh, most literature would go for the Roth, just because um, they, the logic is that as, you, as you're younger, when you're younger, your income is lower, you might be in a lower tax bracket, meaning you pay less tax than when you're a little older. Um, you don't wanna have to, you know, you'll probably make more money and your salary would be higher, meaning when you pull out the money, you'll have to pay more tax on that. So. Most people would say for a young person, um, based on their income, so it's case by case basis, generally if you're in a lower tax bracket to go with the Roth. There's also something called the IRA. So it's also a type of retirement account. Um, it stands for individual retirement account. And it's basically the same in the sense that it helps you save for retirement and it comes with some tax benefits. You can open an IRA, IRA, whether or not you're eligible for a 401k. So anyone can have an IRA, whether or not, you know, your employer offers it or whether or not your employer offers a 401k or whatnot. Um, but you can only contribute money that's been earned through work. So any money that you save through this retirement plan has to come through work. And there are different, two different types. Um, there's a traditional and the Roth. So these are the differences, kind of similar. Traditional, you avoid taxes when you put the money in, but you have to pay the taxes when you pull the money out, when you retire. With the Roth, the contributions that you made, you already pay taxes on, and you don't have to pay taxes on when you withdraw them when you retire. All right, I know that was a lot, and you're overwhelmed, and you probably have lots of questions. Um, so I'm going to give you guys time to maybe type them off or type them out as I launch the post survey. And like I said, um, it's okay if, if, if you feel overwhelmed. Uh, it's just an introduction. You guys can always ask me more questions, your advisor, and we'll make sure to guide you through it. But I think the key takeaway is to start saving now. Um, work with your loan servicer if you, you know, have to repay loans. Um, and to basically live within your means, especially in your first few years. Um, 
and that your salary is different from your take-home salary because you're taking out for tax. So some questions we have are, let's see, which one is better, a 401k or an IRA? So an IRA, so it, it really depends. I think for a lot of people, their employers don't even offer a 401k, so they can only open an IRA, IRA account. So um, yeah, but then for people who get like a 401k from their employer and, and their employer match, that means they'll be able to save more money. Versus for IRA, you're kind of just contributing on your own. If your employer matches for a 401k, that, that might be, you know, better for you. All right. Thanks. All right. Thanks, guys, for taking the poll. Um... I have a lot of other questions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jot down your name and I'm gonna email you the question just so I can end the webinar on time. So um, just hold tight and I will answer your question. Thank you guys so much for joining our webinar today. If you have any questions, feel free to email us through the hub and we'll help you guys out. Thanks.